bit about jewelry. Basically the process is you make your project out of wax and then we invest the project and then we cast the project in metal and you get it back in metal and then you'll have to shine it and make it pretty when it's in metal again. Um, and I will be demonstrating this today too, but I just like you to see the whole process and then I will show you actually how to make it in wax. Okay, so step number one is make your project out of wax. And you can make lots of different projects. You don't have to make rings. We're just gonna talk about them like they're rings. It's kind of like in ceramics. If you talk to someone who is a ceramic artist, they'll always say they make pots. Even though they make bowls and mugs and plates and stuff, they just say pots all the time. So. All right, so here's our little pretend wax ring. It has a heart on top of it. And that's the part I'm going to show, be showing you later in the other room. So step number two is when your wax ring is finished and you've shown it to me and you've gotten a grade on it and you're ready to invest it, then you're going to attach a sprue, put it in a button, and a flask. So what a sprue is, it's a little stick of wax, just like that. And we'll attach it like that. A button is a little piece of rubber. It's like a little rubber disc. Okay, and it holds your sprue, holds your ring up so it's standing up right like this. Here's a little disc, that's the button. Sprue and button. Okay, and then the flask is like a little metal cup, just a little metal tube actually. And the flask will fit over on top of your ring into the button. So once you put it in, like it'll look like this. So here's the button right here. Somehow it grew in size, don't ask me how. Um, and then if you could see through your flask, you'd see your little project in here. That makes sense so far? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get off the chair now since I can reach. Okay, number three is invest. So, investment is a uh, plaster. Does everyone know what plaster is? It's like a white powder, you mix it with water, and then it hardens after a few minutes. So investment is just a heat resistant powder. I mean, heat resistant plaster. Heat resistant plaster. So you have your flask here, has the button on it, has your project inside. And you mix up some investment in a bowl. Here's our, my little bowl, very beautiful. And you'll just pour it right inside the flask all the way to the top of your flask so it'll cover up your project completely. So if you were to turn your flask, you would look and you'd see a little yellow sprue sticking out the bottom. That's how you know there's a project in there. It's in wax. It hasn't been burned out. It hasn't been cast. That's just the stage that it's at. Okay? All right. Then on Fridays, we do what's called the burnout. Burnout. Every Friday. And what the burnout is, is we put all the flasks that have been invested that week and we put them in the kiln. And the kiln is just like the kiln we use for ceramics, except it's small, because it doesn't need to be very big. Um, I'll just draw a quick picture of it. You do not have to draw these pictures if you don't want. Okay, and then here are all the flasks inside. Some of you, if you're bored, sometimes I have you help me load the kiln or unload the kiln. Okay, what happens is we fire these around 1200 degrees. It's not as hot as when we fire ceramics, but it's hot enough that the wax inside each of these flasks combusts. And what that process is, is it basically turns to wax. I mean, turns to gas, all right? So it doesn't disappear, but it seems like it disappears because on Monday morning when we pull these flasks out, they will not have any wax in them at all. They will be completely empty. 
So the wax didn't melt. There's not like a puddle of wax in the bottom of the kiln. It just got so hot it combusted and turned to gas. So combustion, wax turns to gas, leaving an empty flask. So if you were to look at the flask at this point and you look at the bottom where there used to be a sprue, you'll see an empty little hole. No sprue, it'll just be empty. And that means it's ready for casting. Okay, casting is when we put molten metal into the empty mold of your flask. So right now your flask looks like this. It still has the plaster in it, but there's like a little hole exactly how you made your project like that. Okay, so it's an empty mold. I do. I have a casting machine and basically it's an arm here, it has a center arm and it has this other, well, a center pole I guess, and it has this other arm that sticks out like this and I have to wind it up. It's kind of like, um, it's spring loaded so I have to wind it up and stop it. So there's like this little thing here that holds it in place for a little <laughs> second. Okay, and then I'll put your flask right here, horizontal with the little empty hole for the sprue right there. Then there is, sorry, this is kind of a little picture. Should I draw it bigger? No. Again? No. Okay. Um, you can always watch me do this sometime anyway. And then the crucible is just this little thing that holds the metal. So then I put these little granules of metal in. And then I melt them with the blowtorch. And draw my blowtorch. Okay, a little flame. So what happens is in the crucible, I'm melting the little particles of metal until they're completely liquid. When they become completely liquid, I let this arm go and it's spring loaded so it'll spin around really fast. And the centrifugal force will push the metal that I melted in here in the crucible into the little empty hole for your sprue and will fill in your empty mold with your project full of metal. Does that make sense? How do you open it? What do you mean open it? Like take the sprue off. Oh, okay, well that's the next step. Um, okay, so this is the casting process. Does everyone understand that? Cool. Um, so after it's been casted, you'll be able to look at the bottom of your flask and there will be a button right there. That's metal. That's how you know it's been casted and it's ready to be dug out. So that's number six. Dig out. All right, so you'll get your flask back, and it'll have your metal project in it, and investment is hard enough that it was, it kept the form of your project through all of these stages, but if you actually took a metal tool to it, you can just crumble it. It's very soft to the touch. So when you have your project in metal, then you can dig it out. So what, you just take a little metal tool and you just scrape all the investment out. And it's pretty easy, it'll just crumble, and you'll have your project in metal. It'll look like this and it'll have a metal sprue and a metal button on the bottom of it. Okay, all of that will be in solid metal. Then you have to take it to me in the store and I will cut your ring off right here. And I will keep the sprue and the button. It's very important that I get that sprue and button back because that is extra valuable metal. It's actually a ton of metal, probably more metal than in your actual ring, that I will get back and then I can re-melt those to make other people's rings, okay? So I definitely need that metal back. I will cut that off for you, I will weigh it, I will tell you how much it costs, and then it's yours to work on after that. And that's step number seven, which is grind, polish, and shine. Okay, and we have a lot of things to do this. So we have the grinders. We have files, we have sandpaper, and we have two Dremel tools. What kind of metal would need sandpaper? 
What? What kind of metal would need sandpaper? Um, all of them. You can use sandpaper for all of them. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so when you get your ring back, initially it's not going to be very pretty or shiny. It's going to have this layer of like tarnish on it. And you'll probably get your ring back and it'll have, so here's your ring, it'll have a little stump from the screw on it. Because I'll cut it as close as I can, but I can't get it perfect. So the first thing you do is you use the grinders to grind off that little sprue. Next thing you'll do is probably use the Dremel tools or a file or sandpaper and get that first layer of grime off. So it'll totally change the color of your metal. You'll get it back, it'll be like very dark in color. And then once you start shining it, it'll take that layer off. And then you have to start continuing to polish it and shine it until it shines. Now we'll talk about this a little more during the jewelry demo, but we need to talk about grit and sandpaper. So anytime that you're trying to polish something and sand it, you always start with a coarser or heavier grit. And what that means is, we know, you know when you feel the sandpaper, some of it's like really, really rough and some of it is not very rough? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so a heavier grit is going to feel very rough. It means the actual little sand granules are very big. Okay, so you start with that, and what that'll do is it'll even out the surface, but it'll leave all its own little scratches in the ring. So then, if you immediately try and shine it with something very smooth, all those scratches that the sandpaper left in are still going to be there. It's not going to get shiny and smooth. You're still gonna have scratches. So then you have to do a finer sandpaper that has a little bit finer grit. So what it'll do is it'll kind of even out those big scratches that were left from the last time, but it'll leave its own little scratches in. Does that make sense? So each time you're finding a finer grit and a finer grit and a finer grit until you don't have any scratches showing at all. Or there might be tiny scratches, but they'll be microscopic and you can't see them. Okay, and then you can work your way to the buffer, which is totally smooth, and that's the last thing you do, and it'll bring your ring to a shine. Okay, does that make sense? So just make sure when you're sanding, you always find something that is taking away the scratches from the, first, the layer before, and, um, but it's leaving its own little scratches in, if that makes sense. Okay, it'll make more sense when you do it, but I just okay. gotta tell you. How many different types of metal are there? Okay, well we could talk about metal, that would be good. So we have, I'm gonna draw a little box right here. Okay, we have pewter, it's 35 cents. I um, can't remember if we do grams or ounces. I think it's a gram per gram. Yeah, ounces are the ounces are bigger than grams, right? Grams. Okay, pewter. Then we have white bronze, which is also 35 cents a gram. We also have gold. It's not actual gold. It's actually yellow bronze, but we just call it gold because it looks golden color. And that's for 35 cents a gram. White bronze, it's not silver, but it looks silver. Okay, so it's silver in color, but we also have sterling silver, which is quite expensive. It's about 250 a gram. Okay, so I know that doesn't mean a lot to you right now, but basically all these three are very, very cheap. Okay, that's what I would have you do your first projects in. I would not have you do immediately do a sterling silver project, okay? Um, they're very cheap. Most of your rings are gonna cost, I've, I've had little tiny rings that cost less than a dollar because the, these girls like to make them really, really thin and skinny. Um, if it, even if it's a kind of a big ring, it's probably gonna cost like $5. So it's really, really cheap. Most of your rings are gonna cost like a dollar or two, okay? Um, sterling silver, a regular ring, and that is probably going to cost around ten to thirty dollars, just depending on how thick your ring is, how much detail it has, stuff like that. So most of the time, if you want sterling silver, I'm going to ask you make sure that you're, and I'll try and estimate the cost, make sure you're okay with the cost before I cast it. Okay. Um, pewter. Pewter is a very very soft metal. Does anyone remember something special about pewter? Laura? You can't grind it on the... Yes, you can't grind it. You have to hand sand it and file it because it's such a soft metal. Um, it doesn't make good jewelry because it's very, very soft and it turns your fingers green. So it's very good for figurines, like if you're going to sculpt a little animal or uh, make a tie pin or 
something like that, but it's not good for jewelry. So I would stick, for your first ones, I would stick to white bronze or gold, just depending if you want a silver look or a gold look. Does that explain the metals? Cool, um, good question. And then um, these two, I have been told that white bronze and gold, because they're not pure metals, they're just like bronze, some people, they do turn their fingers green anyway, um, and they do tarnish after a while, so you do have to re-polish them after a while. The nicest metal that we have is sterling silver, so if you do stick with jewelry after a while and you do want to make something nice for someone, then you can think about sterling silver. Okay, any questions on this stuff? All right, um, I have my demonstration set up in the other room around the jewelry table. It is small, so get close so that you can see the demonstration. Thank you.